Good morning, folks. We're looking at the JPL orbital diagram for C-2012 S1 ISON. The comet is just two days from crossing as close as it will come to Earth's orbital pathway. Now, Earth won't get there until January 15th, but the comet will cross just north of our eventual trajectory, which is the reason we were worried about debris. It's certainly headed up and away out on its path out of the solar system, assuming it survives perihelion. But when we have meteor showers annually from 100-year-old comets, one had to point out that close intersection and wonder about a breakup of the comet. But it didn't happen. She's tight. She's brightening. The comet is sticking together, and the most we should see mid-January is a nice dusting of shooting stars. The focus now shifts to the slingshot around the sun. Quick news shots. This is almost a facepalm. Military forced to admit the aluminum silica spraying after one such release was blatantly screwing with weather radar. It is meant to screw with radar for enemy guided missiles. I bet someone inside said, ugh, oh, YouTube's gonna have a field day with this one. Something for the high energy buffs? New x-ray detector in their subtlest form, about to lift off and start snapping. Coming to the RSOE where sarin gas leaked from a munition at the Bluegrass Army Depot. Not cool. Following the 7.2 earthquake in the Philippines, a new sinkhole is opened up and is growing. Meanwhile, to the south, we have a mass fish die-off. Now, locals say algae causes a minor kill at the same time every year, but that this is definitively different on a massive scale. I think one of the best things Dr. Phillips does with his time is Earth-to-Sky Calculus. I'm big on STEM initiatives and pretty much anything that makes kids realize how cool this stuff is. You remember that article about solar and cosmic radiation actually affecting airline passengers. This is not a joke, especially with our weakening magnetosphere and general atmospheric collapse. So they sent up a dosimeter, and at mid-latitude the radiation way up is only about 20 times what you get on the ground. But we are more worried about the polar flights. We worry about high latitude due to the funneling of energy from space to the polar region via our magnetic shield. Now we can monitor that radiation, at least in the northern hemisphere. And I'm showing the current high energy proton flux and D region absorption prediction, showing our current energetic elevated particles being funneled to the poles. That lighter equatorial signature of the sun, which responds to flaring, we'll see in a moment. Using such indices, we now see the 5, 11, and 15 kilometer elevation dose ranges for passengers, both as a sheet overlay here and as a vertical slice for specific popular transpolar flights. This is going to be one to watch moving forward. So what about the earthquakes? Yesterday I promised an uptick and even let myself go a bit Heath Ledger with a here we go. So let's start with the space weather, which finally ramped enough to wake the KP index and show energy effect on the magnetometers and electron flux. Then there's the continued solar explosions. Another X-class blast, not going to pop an Earth-directed CME, but hey, if we see it, the radiation technically affects Earth. This is the D-wrap during that flare. So that's one of the factors hitting on all cylinders. Then we have the planets. Mercury can join Saturn and is about to join the Sun. Saturn will do so in early November. And the planets, that makes two. Last but not least, we see the formerly Earth-facing group of coronal holes and the next incomers, but website members who saw the evening news last night remember me calling out their missing piece. That purple right there is the start of them fixing their model to include this coronal hole extension to almost an Earth-facing position, that bigger dark area on the limb being what that chart actually showed. So, with all the factors present and relevant, We've already had two six-pointers, one way south and the other in Chile. Had to laugh a bit at the moderate Japan quake, I mean uh, the China or the Russia border quake. Um, anyone just want to go ahead and call that the North Korean border? A couple others worth watching as well. Sunspots and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.